Welcome to part 2 for solving for the zeros of a polynomial function. This time our polynomial is p of x is equal to x raised to 5 minus 4x raised to 4 plus x cubed plus 10x squared minus 4x minus 8. And again we start by identifying the degree of the polynomial denoted by n and that is 5. This will tell us how many zeros the polynomial has and that would be five zeros. Then we check what is the constant term of the polynomial denoted by a sub zero? That is the negative eight. The negative eight, we get the factors and we write them under p. These are the p values. That would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight. Considering that positive one times negative eight is a negative eight, Negative 1 times 8 is a negative 8. 2 times negative 4 is a negative 8. Negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8. Likewise, identifying the leading coefficient, which is the coefficient of x raised to 5, we have a positive 1. We determine the q's. Q values are the factors of a sub n, which is 1. So what are the factors? It's a plus and minus 1, considering that 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is still a positive 1. We divide P divided by Q, and these are the possible rational zeros. So 1 divided by 1 plus and minus 1, 2 divided by 1 plus and minus 2, 4 divided by 1 plus and minus 4, 8 divided by 1 plus and minus 8. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 times 2, 8 possible rational zeros, and we're looking for 5. So we can make use of evaluation, or we can make use of synthetic solution to check whether any of this will be considered as the zero of p of x. Again, reminder, we can say that p divided by q is the zero of p of x, if p of p divided by q is equal to 0 by evaluation, but by the remainder theorem, p of p divided by q is also the value of the remainder. All right? So let's check for the first one. Let's check for p of negative 1, or I would like to make use of synthetic solution. So I have positive 1. But then again, I have to check first that I have a complete polynomial, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, complete. So we have coefficient 1, negative 4, positive 1, then negative 4, and negative 8. So 1 times 1 is 1, plus a negative 4 is a negative 3, times a 1 is a negative 3, we have negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. 10 plus a negative 2 is an 8. 8 times 1 is an 8. Negative 4 plus 8 is a positive 4. Times 1 is a 4. Thus, we are arriving at the negative 4. And we can say that 1 is not a 0 of p of x. So... In order for us to have a space, okay, since that did not give us a zero. Let's check for another. Let's check negative one. So negative one, again, we have one, negative four, one, then negative four, and a negative eight. All right? So bring down one times negative one is a negative one. Adding negative 4 and a negative 1, we get the negative 5 times negative 1 is a positive 5 plus 1 is a 6 times negative 1 is a negative 6. 10 plus a negative 6 is a 4. 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is a negative 8 times negative 1 is a positive 8 arriving at a zero remainder telling us that negative 1 is a 0 of p of x.
All right? In here, we check for multiplicity so that, remember, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, the number of zeros is equal to the degree of the polynomial and zeros may be repeated, zeros may be rational, zeros may be complex zeros. So, remember that this is the fifth degree. Since we have already divided by, if it is long division, we have divided by x minus 1. Okay? And the q of x is 1 degree less than the dividend, so that means to say this is our fourth degree. We lower down the degree from fifth to the fourth. We are actually making use of what we call the depressed solution. Lowering down the degree until we can factor the polynomial. So we continue. It's a continuous synthetic solution. We check whether negative 1 occurs more than once. Is it possible? Let's check it out. So bring down 1 times negative 1 is a negative 1. Negative 5 plus a negative 1 is a negative 6. Times a negative 1 is a positive 6. Plus 6 is 12. 12 times a negative 1 is a negative 12. Plus a 4 is a negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 1 is a positive 8, giving us a remainder of 0. Therefore, yes, negative 1 occurs twice. Or negative 1 is with multiplicity 2. Will it occur again? Let's check. By the way, this is now our third degree polynomial. We check whether negative 1 occurs thrice. So bring down 1. 1 times negative 1 is a negative 1. Plus a negative 6 is a negative 7. Negative 7 times a negative 1 is a positive 7. Plus 12 is 19. 19 times negative 1 is a negative 19. And we don't get a 0. Therefore, negative 1 does not occur more than 2. More than twice. Okay, so we remove that in as much as we are doing continuous synthetic solution. Okay, what is the next P divided by Q that we're going to check? Let's try a positive 2 this time. So positive 2. So we check, bring down 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 6 plus 2 is a negative 4. Times 2 is a negative 8. 12 minus 8 is actually a 4. 4 times 2 is an 8. And yes, <coughs> we arrived at a remainder of 0, telling us that 2 is a 0 of p of x. And by the way, this is our second degree polynomial, or what we call, it's now a quadratic trinomial okay so that we now have the zeros negative one negative one two we are looking for another other zeros and how many two zeros okay let's check since we now have this q of x to be one this is x squared minus four x plus four so this is a quadratic trinomial, so we equate this to 0. x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. And if you still remember your lower grades, then this is what we call a perfect square trinomial, and a perfect square trinomial is factorable. So we can factor this into two binomials. What are the factors of x? It's an x and x. And since we have a middle term negative and a positive third term, there's a minus minus. And what are the factors of 4, 2, and 2? Remember, what are the factors of a perfect square trinomial? It's the square of a binomial or a bi two binomials that are identical. 
So, applying the zero property. Applying the zero property, we now have it to equate each factor to zero. We have x minus 2 is equal to zero. Therefore, x is equal to 2. And of course, since we have an identical linear equation, x minus 2, you have there also x is equal to 2. So how many zeros were we able to solve? We have negative 1, negative 1, 2, 2, and 2. We have 5. The degree is 5. There are 5 zeros. So we now list down the zeros of p of x. We say the zeros of p of x are, we write with their multiplicities, negative 1 with a multiplicity 2 or twice. And we have here 2 with multiplicity 3 or simply thrice. So that completes 1 negative 1 twice and 2 thrice. That would be equivalent to 5. So 5 zeros. Again, what is this example all about? It's solving for the zeros of a polynomial function. What did we show? We have shown that zeros may be repeated. How do we check that zeros are repeated? We can make use of the depressed solution using continuous division, synthetic division until we arrive at a quadratic equation so that we can solve by either factoring, completing the square, or by the quadratic formula. In this example, we had arrived at the perfect square trinomial, so we made use of factoring. Thank you for listening and watching. Part 3 would involve irrational roots. See you in the next video. Bye for now.